Hey everybody, welcome back to another episode of Room for Growth. Billy Fisher and I are here at the Venetian Resort in Las oh, Vegas. Yeah. We are live from the last day of Adobe Summit. We are tired. We have talked to people for 72 hours straight. We have spent all of our money. We have eaten at all the restaurants in this yeah. place. Uh, but we are happy and we're here to give you an update on some of our favorite things and trends that we saw from Adobe Summit. So Adobe Summit, for anybody who's not aware of what this is, it's a three-day conference that Adobe hosts. It's really talking about their Adobe Experience platform suite of products. So we're not necessarily talking about like Adobe Photoshop and InDesign. It's really their marketing, yeah. data management, um, and then web development toolkit. Yeah. So it primarily brings together marketers, IT folks, maybe product people, but we didn't talk to a ton of product folks. We talked no. to a lot of marketers, yeah. a lot of data scientists, data engineers, those kind of folks. Um, but then the biggest brands oh, yeah. show up to this conference. Yeah, it was fun. Yes, yeah, definitely. Yeah. Adobe does a great job of getting their biggest clients and clients here for three days of lots of learning. Yeah. They bring celebrities in as guest speakers. So that draws a crowd. They always have a big band that plays at Adobe Bash. This yeah. year was Macklemore. And it's like 100,000 people just in the Venetian, basically. So you're all in one casino together. Everybody walking around has like their Adobe badge on, their credentials. Um, and it's a lot of fun. We talked to so many brands. I don't even know where to start. We talked to um, our friends from Marriott. We talked to our friends from T-Mobile, of course, and just some of our like yeah. larger clients. But we also talked to Toyota. I had a great conversation with yeah. folks from Toyota. They, I was really excited about what they were working on. I had a great conversation about data with Home Depot. We talked to Vanguard. We talked to so many financial services yeah. clients. That was really dominant. My um, favorite part was, and I hope I don't get them in trouble, I met somebody from Walgreens, uh, yeah. an engineer from Walgreens, and I looked to my left at right to his left and he's walking around with a data engineer from CVS and I was like wait a second you guys aren't allowed to be together and they were they were hanging out together and so kind of cool to see you know competitors uh, uh, that probably have very similar problems and challenges they're trying to solve yeah. uh, work together long conversation with somebody from Southwest Airlines who's also an ultra runner yeah. and had recently completed a 180 mile run in a hundred hours. Yeah, I he was believe. nuts. He, he nuts. offered to, to uh, guide me on an ultra marathon, which I, I, did, I oh declined. Gosh, I have no interest. So. On your spiritual quest. so anyway, that's kind of what the conference was, what the feel yeah. of it was. We were a platinum sponsor, yeah. so we had this you know, booth. huge booth with multiple demos, demoing how you use three to five of the um, Adobe platforms together to drive your digital experiences. And it was awesome. It was awesome. That's why our feet hurt so much. We, we oh were working God, the booth. Feet yeah. hurt. Work in the booth. <laughs> I'm going to start by immediately admitting that I have a tiny hangover. Yeah. And therefore, I'm going to steal the words of a man who I presume wrote this on the first day of the conference <laughs> while his brain was fresh and shiny. And I think it's like just one of the best summaries of the sentiment that I felt the whole time I was here. This is an amazing articulation. Um, so this is from the chief digital officer at BlackRock, and he posted this on his LinkedIn uh, two days ago. So it would have been the first day of the conference at the end of it. And he said, an interesting thing I noticed at Adobe Summit is that there are many who identify as technologists as there are who identify as marketers. Great marketing is about building brands, telling inspiring stories, and engaging people. But contemporary marketing is also about being equally good at data, AI, design, and engineering. The modern marketing organization faces a critical dilemma. How does it effectively upskill marketers on technology while also effectively upskilling technologists on marketing? Mm -hmm. Without this, marketing becomes disconnected and ineffective, and there is very little ROI from technology investments. The organizations that resolve this dilemma and create bilingual marketers will be the ones that win. So he hashtagged the word bilingual marketers. Again, that was yeah, all from that. Uh, the chief digital officer at BlackRock. None of those words were mine. But I love this concept of bilingual marketers, yeah. just this merging of technology and marketing concepts, how both have to be so good. Yep. Um, that has been really my sentiment here. We talk about this a lot, that there's just yeah. a lot of demands on a modern marketer today. They have to be creative. They yep. have to be really good at creating content. They have to have vision. They have to have a strategy. And they also have to know how to automate it. Right. Those are not the same skills. It takes a lot of people coming together. And that has been my biggest takeaway is, man, if you want to take the Ferrari that is the Adobe platform, yep. if you want to upgrade to this new AEP experience, Adobe experience platform, which is kind of their most modern trio of tools, 
you got to be great at both. Yeah. If you want the value. Yeah. And the people that are the, you know, the, some of the best people on our team are exactly that, you know, and we have that statement, never trust an idea from someone who can't build it. And we don't literally mean, you know, get in there and actually maybe, um, you know, build an application, but somebody that, that I love that I'll probably use the bilingual marketer uh, phrase over and over again. Um, a couple of things I've seen uh, here at Adobe Summit. One thing that I've not heard a lot about is, you know, the recession yeah, uh, or the, my budget constraints. So people here at Adobe are, they've got like things they need to do. And so um, if, if you're at home and listening and you're kind of caught up in some of that uh, challenges, I would warn you, there are a group of the leading brands here yes. that are out there trying to solve these problems. And I didn't hear it one single time, uh, you know, of kind of the, the things that are getting in the way. I did hear a lot about the silos of organizations that, that that kind of alludes to where, well, I really would like to do this, but I don't own this particular piece. And so I think that's one thing that, um, you know, we'll have to continue to help our clients with. And organizations are just going to have to figure out how to break down some of these silos because, um, yeah, you're not going to deliver a, a great Adobe experience or any experience if, if you're uh, kind of siloing out um, how you're tackling it. Yeah, I totally agree with that. I think there was a huge focus at Adobe Summit on the power of personalization and not just in a really intangible sense, but a true, what is the ROI of yeah. personalization? How do we do personalization in a way that becomes truly niche end to end? The content is niche, the experience is niche, the ways that we're leveraging technology to create personalization, whether through an in-store experience, an app experience, a web experience, channel. Uh, brands are hungry to do this really well and that call to action to be good at personalization will have financial rewards for yeah. brands that do it well and execute it well and figure out how to target the right people at the right time. It's like old concepts that we've talked about, but I get the sense that when budgets get tight, yeah. the focus gets really serious and the competitive edge to want to rise above yeah. and really harness uh, people spending. I also heard a lot age. about... Sorry to, to interrupt you. I heard a lot about AI and, yes. you know, we're both kind of sometimes like uh, hesitant to get to, to lean too far in because it's like, Hey, we're still helping organizations tackle basic uh, kind of fundamental elements. But the, the way that AI was really positioned is to help unlock some of those, uh, um, some of those advanced uh, automated yes. uh, life cycle campaigns, you know, some of the things that we've been talking about personalized experiences, how can AI make it easier for an organization that um, hasn't been able to, to deploy that um, so far, how, how can AI make it easier to do? And so that's that's kind of an yeah. interesting observation. Yeah, definitely. I think of all of the tech buzzwords, very little crypto here. You might expect that. <laughs> yeah. Lots of AI conversation. But I was actually hearkened by the fact that we talked to a ton of brands who seem to understand that before you can do AI, before you can really unleash AI at scale, at least there's lots of AI use cases you can do if this is true, you have to integrate your data appropriately. Yeah. So we had dozens and dozens oh, of yeah. conversations with some of the biggest brands about how you take really sticky platforms that don't want to talk to each other, not that Adobe has ever been guilty of making it difficult to integrate data from other sources and destinations, but how do you do that? How do yeah. you really bring together this ecosystem where data is together? We spent a lot of time untangling the capabilities of Adobe's real-time <laughs> CDP. Oh, yeah. That was buzz. Like Adobe Journey Optimizer, which is Adobe's version of omni-channel autom like campaign automation. A little late to market, but a good product. Yeah. We talked about that quite a bit. There seemed to be good buy in there. There were tons of questions, though. Technical about questions. Technical, too. Yeah. very deep technical questions about what value would the Adobe real time CDP yeah. bring to different brands? It's the and year of the CDP. It's the year of the CDP, yeah. for sure. Yeah. yeah. I had to phone a friend a couple times or multiple times, you know, because when I say technical questions, uh, we had uh, engineers coming to the floor from big brands asking very deep questions. And so I was constantly screaming for uh, some of our engineer friends that were working in the booth. Uh, I needed needed some help. So one thing we did not do is we talked up Macklemore. We did not go see the Macklemore kind of bash because uh, we were busy. You know, we had some great dinners with clients. Um, and it was kind of a good reminder that you work over Zoom uh, for so long and uh, all of a sudden you get 
get down next to somebody and, and all of a sudden you become, it's, it's human and it's, it's so much easier to tackle some of these things that we're talking about on Zoom calls yeah. all the time. That was definitely a big takeaway for me. Just the reminder that you're totally right. We used to go like pre-pandemic. We are a big go to the yeah. client. Have, have a dinner. Partners, yeah. Have a dinner. Work in a, in a, on a whiteboard together. Yeah. That sort of thing. But I think even post-pandemic travel has, is still a little slower yeah. than it was pre-pandemic. And all of the dinners that we had were with clients that I've worked with a lot on yeah. really sticky, really hairy problems. And I met all of them for the first time. And the, and it was lovely. Yeah. Like just the yeah. power of breaking bread with people changes oh, yeah. I think the relationship. That was great. So yeah, we did a little bit of gambling last night. You know, I'm not a big gambler, but we, we, uh, uh, oh my, I had, I broke many rules of the craps table. We were yelling, we were screaming. And so uh, that's what we opted to do. And that's why we're moving a little slow this morning. I, I hope I don't get fired for telling the story, but we <laughs> just had Tibia Stengel on the podcast. Um, he is our CEO and a president within the TELUS brand uh, who just acquired us. And uh, we talk a lot about how great of a leader Tibius is. We call him TD affectionately. And, and you know, he's got articles written about him. He's got awards. He's got a glass door rating that's through the roof. But I marveled. Very few of us actually knew how to play craps independently last yeah. night. And the, our CEO just, like, taught us all how to play, like, probably six yeah. of us. Taught us, like, what bets to place. He's a man who knows how to take risk and bet, Yes, too. I've noticed that. And the speed at which all of us would just set down our money <laughs> doing trust. whatever he did, blind trust. <laughs> yeah. Like, I don't know what leadership yeah. lesson that is. Hey, I won $125. So, I won so, uh, 600, 600 And all I did was do whatever <laughs> you, TD did. <laughs> you left at the right time. I didn't, yeah. Yeah. Okay. I well. made no independent moves at the craps table. Blackjack. Blackjack. I can do my stats, but... Yeah. So as we leave, you know, Adobe Summit, I think the um, it's going to be, again, the year of the CDP, solving really yes. complex data problems. Automation, automation, automation was a, a continual theme uh, that we've been preaching uh, for, the, for the ever since we started this podcast. Uh, and uh, so that's certainly nothing new that I think is going to continue to, to be a good unlock or, or a, a critical element for how a brand goes to market. So a common trend that I, within the Adobe space for sure this year is everyone's trying to figure out how they unlock Adobe Experience platform. So how they upgrade their suite to bring on some of these more modern tools. So that's, of course, Adobe Real-Time CDP, Adobe Journey Optimizer, um, Adobe Journey Analytics, and then, you know, some of the more common like Workfront tools or Target yeah. that come into play. They're potentially thinking about sunsetting Adobe campaign, though Marketo still stays really relevant and prevalent. I think Marketo yep. is probably around to stay. Um, but then, you know, a lot of companies are figuring out, should they sunset the audience orchestration uh, tool and platform that Adobe offers? So we're here for those challenges. We're yeah. doing that every day. That feels like something that's going to dominate this year is how quickly can we unlock the power of these new technologies that Adobe has released and what kind of business result can they drive? Yep. Yeah. And then just to close out, the one thing that was a hit at our booth was the, the Willow Tree yeah. water bottle was a hit. So if you want one of these, send us a message. I don't even know if we have some, but I'll send, I'll figure it out and we'll send, send you one. Um, and uh, yeah, uh, let's head, let's head home. I'm ready to go home. Get go the home. Heck out of Vegas. Yep. Three days in the <laughs> desert is all yeah. we need. See you later. Let's go. See home. you later.